These are Microsoft Loop's top 10 features that you didn't know you needed. My personal favorite is tip number eight. I would love to know what yours is in the comments below. Without further ado, let's nerd out. Tip number one is how we can now access Loop from within Microsoft Teams. So here we are within Teams and from the ellipses on the bottom left, we can search for Loop. From here, we can select the app. And then now we have all of our Loop workspaces, Loop pages, as well as components available to us without leaving the Teams dashboard, which is great. Now, I would also just recommend right-clicking on the icon and then pinning it to the navigation menu. Tip number two is how we can add a table of contents into Microsoft Loop. At Amy's Animal Shop, we are getting ready for our trendy dog back to school product line launch, and we have a product launch plan here, but it's a little difficult to navigate. So in order for us to insert a table of contents, we first need to add some headers. So if we select this text, and we'll see this quick access menu appear, and this H1, 2, and 3 are headings 1, 2, and 3. But if we select the ellipses, then we can head on down to headings and lists, and then we have these options here, along with their corresponding shortcut keys. So Control Alt 1 for heading 1, and so on. Now, in addition to these standard headers, there is also an option here to add collapsible headers. So this is really great if you have a huge document and you want to have headers that will collapse the contents into it so that you can consolidate your information. In our example, I'm just going to go ahead and select heading 1. And here, select the text, Control Alt 2. I'll select this text again and go Control Alt 3. Do Control Alt 3 again. And so now you can see how these headers are coming into play. So if we want to add a table of contents at the top here, we'll just make some space and then forward slash. And this is where all of those components or elements of a loop page can be added. So if we just start to type table, then we'll see that there's a standard table, but we're looking for that table of contents. So if we select that, then it's just automatically going to populate based on the headers of this page. And then if we hover over any of those items and we can easily select it and it will bring us to that section. Tip number three is how we can add loop components to OneNote. Loop components are a major benefit of using Microsoft Loop. So let's learn how to use these effectively. Here we are within OneNote and we are going to create a back to school products list. So what we need to do is go to insert and then loop components. And you may notice that when we press that forward slash in loop, a lot of these items mirror the contents that were there. So in our case, we want to add a table. We can just give this a title. We'll call it products and we'll go items. Okay, so now that we have started to create our table, what we can do is just go ahead and copy this component. And then now we will send it in an email to Mike. Say, hi, Mike. I'm going to go Control V to paste that loop component and then click send. So here we have that email that Mike has received and he has that loop component in there. So if he wants to add any new items to this products list, then he can simply go ahead and select new. Let's add some cute booties. And you'll notice here on the left-hand side that we can see that Mike is working in this space and he'll just tab through and those are gonna be the cinnamon color. So we can see literally how these update in real time. And this just ensures that you're always gonna have the most up-to-date document or loop component because everyone is able to update it in these different apps. Tip number four is how we can add comments to tables within Loop. So here we have a table for our upcoming fashion show and we want to add a specific comment to this scarf line item where Rue is going to be the model. Now we can go ahead and just right click in that cell, head on down to new comment, or you can do control shift F2 but I find it particularly helpful to hover over the line item and then go open detail view. From here, this is going to pull up all of the information for that line item within your table. When we hover over any of these 
items, we'll see a little comment box appear. When we click on that, then we have the comment window pop up and I just want to tag Mike. So we're just going to start off by pressing the at symbol and then we can search for your coworker or whoever you want to mention in this comment so that they will be notified. And then if you are enjoying this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps me out. And then now we will go into Mike's loop and see what that looks like. And from this main homepage, we'll see on the top left here that he has a notification. So if he clicks on that, then the notifications pane is going to pop up. And the most recent one is the one that I have just tagged him in. So when we click on that, then it will automatically take us to this table where we have mentioned him. And he'll see the little comment here in that purple little box. And if he clicks on it, then he can easily just respond to that comment and say, great. We are back in my loop now. And under notifications, I also have a little notification bell. So if we click on that, then we can see that Mike has replied to my comment. Now, if you remember, Mike didn't actually tag me, but because I was the one that commented, I will automatically see notifications or updates when people respond to my comment. Tip number five is how we can create a page from a link. So what we need to do, this is an important step, is we need to select the workspace so that these pages within the workspace pop out. Then we can go to this create new and we'll see page, but what we're looking for is link. From here, we can just paste a web URL or if you even have a document within OneDrive, then you can take the link from there and then put it here. So mine is my YouTube channel. We can see that the text is automatically updated, which is pretty cool. But you can even decide to customize this further if you like, the option is yours. So when we click add, then we can see that there's that little link icon and that my YouTube channel has now been linked to this loop workspace. So this is a great way to provide all of your information into one harmonized area. Tip number six is shared locations for pages. So let's say that we want to add this back to school page to a different workspace. We can hover over the page in this page navigation menu and then select the ellipses. And from here, we're going to go to add to workspace. And this is where we'll define the workspace that we want to add this page to. So I will go ahead and select OSWA. You can go ahead and just open that workspace here. But I'm going to toggle to it through these arrows. Then we can see that that trendy dog back to school line page has been added to this workspace. And you'll also notice that it's got this little link icon here, meaning that it is linked. So if you're ever unsure where this is linked to, then to find that out, we can go up to this grid icon at the top, which is shared locations. If we expand that, then we'll see that the source is Amy's Animal Shop. Now here we have both of these workspaces side by side. We have the OSWA workspace as well as the Amy's Animal Shop workspace. And if we want to go ahead and update anything on this page, and we can just type update and we'll see that it updates across both workspaces. So it is a live link that is going to always provide every workspace with the most up-to-date resource. So there's no more versions that you might be missing out on. This is going to be the document that everybody is working on. So it's a really cool feature that streamlines your collaboration. And one final little tip here, if you ever want to remove that link, and we can just go ahead to the ellipses and then go to remove link. And that's going to remove that page from that shared location. But if we go back to Amy's Animal Shop, the original document is still there because that is the source page. Tip number seven is how we can use Copilot in Loop. I'm not gonna lie, Copilot did actually write all of the content that is on this page. So let me show you how Copilot works in Loop. When we select anywhere on the page, then we will see a little Copilot icon on the right hand side or this draft with Copilot. You can see that Copilot can help us create, brainstorm, draft a blueprint, or even describe content for us. And if you double click on a prompt, then it's going to generate another prompt. So these are just examples to get your juices flowing. 
but we have this back to school line and we actually don't even have an ideal marketing target audience. So let's ask Copilot to draft the marketing avatar for the back to school line. Now what Copilot is going to be doing here, it's going to be reviewing the contents from this page for information, taking the back to school line that I provided. And then it's also going to be reviewing my prompt and it's going to be generating an output based on those two components. Now Copilot does require an additional license, but it is so helpful to have in here. And if you do wanna check it out, I've linked another video in the description. We can see here that Copilot has now gone ahead and added a marketing avatar for the Trendy Dog Back to School line. Now this is beyond anything that we could create on our own within literally the seconds that it took me to describe Copilot to you, but you are gonna need to tweak it as you see fit, but this is just a great way to get the collaboration within your team started using Copilot in Microsoft Loop. Tip number eight is how we can link a meeting in Microsoft Loop. So here I am within Teams in the calendar area and I'm going to create a meeting. I'm going to add a title for the meeting as well as invite my attendees. And then at the bottom here, we have the add meeting notes. When you expand that, it is going to create a loop component that is called collaborative notes. So these are loop notes linked to this Teams meeting. You can go ahead and start to add an agenda and you can start to build out your meeting notes. So these are a great way to be transparent with your team on the topics as well as meeting notes and then follow up tasks. Now, I wanna show you what this looks like when we're actually in the meeting. When you are in the meeting, these meeting or collaborative notes are on the right-hand navigation menu. So this is a great way for you to stay updated and to update your notes as the meeting goes on so that you don't fall behind. There is one important thing that I recommend doing here as well, which is selecting the ellipses and going to that shared locations. So this is gonna be what we just covered so that you can add these meeting notes to a specific workspace within Microsoft Teams. But if you forget to do that, there is another new place that I wanna show you where you can easily access these. Back in Loop, if we go to meeting notes on the left-hand navigation menu, then this will bring up a list of all of your collaborative notes from meetings within Microsoft Teams. And we can see that there's that fashion show collaborative notes that we've just created. There is also a little handy calendar at the top here where you can sort by dates or weeks to filter down those meetings so that you can find what you are looking for. Tip number nine is how we can manage tasks within Microsoft Loop. Now, one of the common ways to assign tasks is through a task list, which if we search for that here, then this is going to pull up this task list. I'm going to control Z to undo that because these follow-up tasks are also a task list. So if we select add task, then we can see that the task list has appeared. And if we want to assign Mike a task, here we are in Mike's email. And when you assign somebody a task, they will be sent an email by default for their settings. And we can see here that we can go to the task or we can open it within Planner, within Teams, or even Planner for the web. So I'm going to open up the Planner within Teams. And here we are within Mike's Planner, within Teams, and we can see that task card there. So just for reference, you can easily locate these tasks that you have been assigned for the task list within my tasks and then assigned to me. And here we are, that one is assigned Mike a task for the fashion show. So this is just a great way to harmonize task management within Microsoft Loop into other apps such as Microsoft Planner or even Microsoft To Do which leads us to tip number 10, which is managing notifications. Now, Microsoft Loop has a tendency to notify us in so many places, and some people might find it a bit overwhelming. So one thing that Microsoft Loop does is it sends you this start your day email, which will provide you with an update on tasks and mentions where you are assigned to, as well as unread items from over a day ago. Now, if you wanna manage the notifications for this email, we can scroll on down to the bottom 
and go to notification settings. These settings are actually managed within your OneDrive notifications. And at the bottom here, we're looking for this email digest of all loop app notifications sent once daily. So you can toggle this on or off as per your preference. And if you want to check out some new features within Microsoft Loop, then I would highly recommend checking out this other video here is there are a ton of cool things.